All right, so this is the 2022 Keystone Montana High Country 385 BR. I love the graphic package on the Montana High Country on the outside. I think it's a really beautiful looking fifth wheel. Pretty aggressive looking decals up front here that I really like. And it's a really beautiful looking fifth wheel. With it being the lower tier model from Montana, the less expensive version, you don't get that feel from it, especially looking at the outside here. I mean, it looks like a very nice looking fifth wheel. The only thing that is kind of a dead giveaway that it is the less expensive model is you don't have the frameless windows like you would have on a full Montana. So your windows are framed in here on this Montana. And I don't think, I, you can see on this Alpine off in the distance how that has frameless windows. That's gonna be a dead giveaway that this is the less expensive version. But other than that, Everything else about it looks really, really elegant and nice and has somewhat of an aggressive decal package. Really like the color scheme of it. It's a, almost like a cream colored white with the blue decals and the black accents in there and everything. Looks really pretty. So, so come along the outside, you'll see you have your two awnings out here. So you have one on the slide out and one in this whole area here. So looks like about at least two thirds to three fourths of the RV has awning coverage here. And those will both come out and cover your whole camping area out here. I also really like that your outdoor kitchen that this model comes with is under the awning. So you have this two burner stove here that pulls out. So this will pull out here and has these little blue tabs. Of course, I can't do it with one hand as I hold the camera, but that'll slide in and out. You have your little mini refrigerator here, a good amount of countertop space, solid metal countertops in there, and then you have a cutting board that it comes with, so this will pull out. This is a little unique thing that Montana throws in there with this model as well. That cutting board that pulls out there, and then you have an outlet back behind here and some cabinet or drawer space there as well. Looks like I actually got a light. Oh, you have an LED light strip up underneath here. I didn't even know that. It's an amber colored LED light strip, so just some nice accent lighting. And then you do have a motion activated light here as well that you can turn on. So you have that outdoor entertainment space and then come in here, this is gonna be your pass-through storage compartment. Solid slam latch handles on there. These are the new design for the 2022s and I'm sure it'll be transferring over to 2023s as well once those start coming out. But a more sleek looking design, really um, easy pull on them, nice and comfortable. And then you have these latches here that will latch in place to hold that door up. Open this up and you can see a really big pass-through storage compartment. This is a full profile fifth wheel, so you do have the drop frame construction here, which is going to give you the bigger storage compartment. You have aluminum framing all the way throughout, and all of your aluminum framing is welded on both sides of the frame, and then you also have a wrapped floor up here as well. So everything on the flooring there is wrapped. You can install a TV out here if you want to as well, so your plugs for a TV will be right there. You could put a mount right here on the wall that would allow the TV to sit sideways like that and it would slide out and then pivot out that's something you could do and then this has a 400 watt solar package on it so these outlets that say inverted those are going to be able to get power from your solar panels with that 400 watt solar system there when you have an inverter that allows that to transfer that power from the battery to the 110 to power those outlets so you can see when you come over here you have the 400 watt solar system there. So we'll get up on the roof and take a look at those solar panels here in a second. A really big pass-through storage compartment. Then we're gonna open this up. You got your 30 pound propane bottle in here as well. And you'll have another one on the other side. To come around the front. A Couple things to mention up here. First of all, you have your docking lights here. These little LED safety lights there that are the amber color. You can't really see them in the daytime, but and the dusk and night times, you'll be able to see them. Then you have the patented hitch vision plate from Keystone. So if my hand here is your bed of the truck backing up, you'll be able to see as you back up how your truck bed is aligning with your pin box there, lining that up by yourself. And then this here looks like it's either the road armor or the Kurt pin box here. There's no branding on it, but they're both pretty much the exact same thing where you have this pivoting head here with a one inch thick, just about rubber bushing there. And as this rotates back and forth, that's going to absorb a lot of that chucking as you brake and accelerate, things like that. So that's gonna give you a more comfortable towing experience. And you also have a light right under here so you can see what you're doing in the nighttime as well. 
Coming down underneath here, open this up and you have a huge storage compartment down underneath here. Everything looks nice and organized. And then with the 400 watt solar package, you have this 30 amp solar charge controller. So this is the upgraded bigger solar charge controller than what comes with the 200 watt solar package from Keystone. So you have an upgraded solar charge controller. You have the inverter there that is also working with your residential refrigerator. And then you have some battery disconnect switches down underneath here and a spot for your battery right there where your battery will plug in. Really cool thing about this solar package with the 400 watt system, there is no battery hooked up right now. We are literally plugged into no power sources whatsoever. And the solar alone allows me to get all the lights on, put the awnings out, stuff like that off that 400 watt solar package. So pretty cool that you're able to do that with that 400 watt system, not even needing to hook a battery up to the RV. Coming around to this side, you have three slides on this side. So this is gonna be your bedroom slide. This is your mid bunk slide. And then that is your living room slide there. You're gonna have the Swintec slide mechanisms on both of these smaller slide outs, which are these kind of rack and pin style slides where you have um, the spot there and the spot there. I was trying to think of what exactly it'd be called. It's um, just show you what it looks like because I'm blanking on what exactly that mechanism will be called there. But you have that on both corners, on both sides of the slide out. And then on this slide here, the bigger slide, you have the rack and pinion style slides down underneath here. So a nice solid slide mechanism there on your big slide outs. You're also going to have six point auto leveling on this fifth wheel. So you have the two legs up front, two more legs in front of the axles, and then two more legs behind the axles for six point auto leveling. Coming over here, you'll be able to see if it's unlocked. It might be locked possibly. Oh no, perfect. See your controls there for the auto leveling. And then your other 30 pound propane bottle, all of your instructions there for the auto leveling. Pretty cool little thing. Lipper just followed me on Instagram. So that was kind of cool. Um, I didn't expect that. I actually didn't even realize what their logo looked like when it popped up on Instagram, but they just followed me on Instagram. So that was kind of cool. Maybe uh, there'll be some kind of partnership with Lipper in the future, who knows? But, and then you'll open this up and this will be, of course, might need two hands. Yep, need two hands to do that there. And pass through storage access from the other side and then you'll have all of your water access through here as well. So turn that light on. All of your water hookups will be in this area here plus your pool valves for your black and gray tanks up front here also have hookups for satellite if satellite was something that you're wanting to do and an additional solar plug. So if you wanted to hook up more solar on the side of the RV here, you can do that there as well. Outside shower, so you'll be able to hook up the 25 foot coil hose that this RV comes with right there and everything else that you need for water hookups is all in that spot right there. I just realized we didn't look at the exact weight of this RV. I know I put the specs at the beginning, but the exact dry weight of this one is 13,680 pounds and you have a gross vehicle weight rating of 16,500 pounds there. So that's gonna be if you were to fully load this thing, but dry weight is 13,680 pounds exactly on this fifth wheel. So we most often recommend at least a three quarter ton for towing something like this, a um, 250 or 2,500 diesel or up or something bigger than that to tow something this size. And as we come around this way, you're gonna see you have your dump valves right here. Oh, a couple of things to point out actually. You have a sewer storage, uh, sewer line storage compartment right there. So your sewage tubes, you can stow right in there. And then you're gonna have your tanks dumps right here. So this is where you'll dump your, dump your tanks. And actually on this RV, being over 40 feet, that's actually the only spot where all of your dump tanks go to or where all of your tanks will be dumped from and that's actually really nice. I thought that there would be two compartments on there. I don't know why I was thinking that, but yeah, there's only one spot. So you don't have to use any Y connections or anything like that. Everything for all the gray and black tanks will come out of that one spot. Then here, this is going to be the road armor suspension. So this road armor suspension here is gonna give you six inches of travel. These rubber bushings here will give you three inches of travel up and three inches of travel down. So this is the best travel that you'll get on the suspension system straight out of the factory that I know of. So that's a great upgraded suspension system that you get from Montana there. And then coming back underneath here, we'll look underneath the RV. Have your 50 amp plug back here on the back corner. 
and then coming down under here, you can see you have your spare tire underneath there and then a fully enclosed underbelly. So everything is wrapped underneath here and all your water tanks and water lines sit above the insulation. So when your furnace is running, you will have heat being delivered to that cavity there that is going to make sure your water tanks and water lines stay warm. And then this Montana also has 12 volt heat pads on all of your water tanks. So if you want an electric heat source to keep your, wa or your water tanks warm, those 12 volt heat pads can be flipped on inside to give you an electric heat source directly to those water tanks so they don't freeze, especially while you're transporting down the road. On the back here, you have backup camera prep so you can install a backup camera, a nice big rear window for a great view at your campsite. And then right here is another outdoor shower. This may be locked, it is, but you can actually hook up another, your shower head right there or your hose to have an outdoor shower on this side of the RV as well. On your backup lights, you do have a reverse light as well. So a nice safety feature so people know when you are backing up. And you do have a towing hitch on the back. So whether you want to put accessories back here or you want to tow something, this is rated for 3,000 pounds. So you can tow off of this hitch as well. And then that's just about everything on the outside except for on the roof. So I'll give you one look at this side real quick and let's get up on the roof and take a look at that real fast. It's a little wet, so let's hope I don't slip. All right, as we get up here, I'm not gonna walk around it because it's all wet up here, but you do have a more textured roof here with this Alpha Flex roof membrane. So very textured, it's really not slippery, but you have white AC covers, so I love that, so it's not gonna absorb as much heat, which is gonna give you cooler air inside the RV. Two Coleman Mott Q-Series ACs inside this fifth wheel, and then you have the two 200 watt solar panels on here as well to give you 400 watts of solar and then you also have a fully walkable roof and fully walkable slide out boxes. I know a lot of people have been talking a lot about different solar stuff. So with solar, this 400 watt package is enough power to keep your batteries charged and then deliver some power to outlets inside the RV. The way that solar works is solar basically is going to be what is charging your batteries. So the solar panels charge the batteries and then the batteries are going to be what power different things inside the RV. Now the batteries themselves power things like your awnings, your slide outs, your lights, stuff like that. The, little, the smaller stuff that doesn't take as much energy consumption. Then you have your 110 system, which that is going to be powering things like your ACs, your TV, your microwave, different stuff like that, the bigger stuff, your outlets. So what solar does, if you want to expand upon your solar package to power more things inside the RV, you need to get enough solar panels and enough battery capacity to have enough power stored up to power these bigger components, which means you're gonna need things like lithium batteries, you're gonna need more solar panels, and then you're gonna need an inverter so that it can take that battery power and invert it to 110 power to power these bigger components. So it can get pretty pricey to start wanting to power bigger things like your AC and stuff like that off of solar on the RV. And I just wanted to explain a little bit of how that works because I get questions about solar almost every single day right now. And it seems like there's a lot of confusion about exactly how solar works. And pretty much everybody that contacts me wanting solar wants to power their entire RV off of solar, which costs about 15 to $20,000 if you wanna order the solar package. Sorry, I'm going down the ladder as I do this. But yeah, the solar package from Montana, the 1200 watt solar system that can power everything on the RV is about a $19,000 add-on. So, and it's an additional option you have to order. So just be aware of what that is. And in most instances, it's a little bit easier and definitely way less expensive to just get a generator if you're wanting to power the whole entire RV off of a source like that. But just wanted to go over some of those details real quick. You also have a propane quick connect line underneath here as well. So you can hook up this two burner stove there or whatever else you want outside here as well. And that is just about everything on the outside. As you can see, you have your outside speakers out here as well. And you have LED light strips underneath the awnings that whether you are having your awning out or in, you can see. So that LED light strip you'll get use of no matter what, whether or not you have your awning in and out. And I say that because a lot of manufacturers will put the awning light inside this light or inside that bar right there. So you actually have to push your awning all the way out before you can see the LED light. So something that Montana does where you get to 
have access to that LED light no matter what. That is just about everything on the outside. Let's go ahead and head inside. Gonna open that up there, get a little bit wider lens there so we can see more of what's going on. This is gonna be capable for four season living. So things like those 12 volt heat pads, the two ACs and all of the insulation on this RV. It's gonna be rated from zero to 100 degrees. So you should be comfortable in just about any climate. Also have strut assisted steps. So when I lift those up, they will stay up on their own. So you don't have to worry about when you pull these out, if they're gonna fall on your head or anything like that. Also great improvement to adjust the height of these legs. All you have to do is push this um, little lever right there and that's gonna allow this to go up and down. So no pins that you have to pull out or anything like that. But biggest thing with this is it's kind of heavy so you don't have to worry about it ever falling on you or having to support the weight as you pick that up or take it down. Really nice solid step entry, wide step here, plenty of surface area on each step so that you're safe going in and out of the RV. As we come inside, the biggest benefit to a mid bunk model is having all of this living space with an additional bedroom. So as you come in here, you have the dinette table, you have the two recliners, and you have the three cushion sofa here that will pull out to a bed. So you can sit three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people in this living room area, and you have an additional room in addition to your main bedroom. So that's the big benefit to the mid bunk. There really aren't many models out there that allow this much seating with a second bedroom other than a mid bunk model. So something that makes them really popular. And as we look around here, it's very beautiful inside. Really nice look. Montana does a great job with their interior design. Definitely a nice light but homey atmosphere in here. Feels really comfortable, feels really fresh and modern, um, but doesn't feel too overdone. It's not like overbearingly white or anything like that. So a nice gray color that they picked out. You get the island kitchen here with the dual basin sink, but it has the oversized sink to the left and then the smaller sink to the right. Stainless steel sinks here with the black faucet and the stainless steel tip on the black faucet as well. You also have this flip up countertop here. Now the reason this is here is so when your slide outs are pushed in, you can still get to the refrigerator. As you can see here, as that slide out comes in, the island will not be in the way of getting into the refrigerator. When you flip this up, it would be. So they put that there so you can have that extra countertop space, but when you are traveling, you can still get into the refrigerator with the slide out closed. So we'll go through this living area relatively quick so we can get back to the bedroom and I guess the two bedrooms and the bathroom. But on this, Dinette table, you do have an upgraded seat with back cushions and seat cushions. Um, no flip up on the seat there, I don't believe. Yeah, no, no flip up there, but a nice quality seat cushion there that you get that's very comfortable. You're gonna have a leaf that pulls out on this table and I think it's strapped in somewhere underneath here. Yeah, it is. Okay, it's strapped in right here. So there's a strap holding it in place, but you do have a leaf that will pull out right here to extend the length of the table. And then it's just a nice color on the table as well. Big windows all along your campsite and these are all going to have pull down blackout shades on them. So when you pull these down, nice pull down blackout shade there so that you can black out all the light when you want to. You'll have your two recliners here that have the cup holders in the middle and a little storage compartment as well. And these are going to be power recliners so you can see you have your power switches there to recline and retract and you have your USB port there as well to charge. So you'll have that on both sides. It is the Thomas Payne collection furniture that you're used to seeing in most of your higher end fifth wheels as well. And in your slide out here, you have a dimmer switch. So you can dim these lights here. See as I move that dimmer switch down, how those lights go down and up. So you'll be able to dim those lights if you want a little bit different ambiance in here. Like I said, three cushion sofa will pull out to a bed. But what I really like about the three cushion sofa though, is that it gives me enough space to lay down on here. So being about 6'1 without my shoes on, I have enough space where my head can be on this headrest and my feet actually do not hit the, he the uh, um, armrest. Sorry, I called that a headrest. I put my head on the armrest there and my feet do not hit this armrest there. So enough length there for quite a bit of space there. And then up above, you have all your storage cabinets. This should be unobstructed all the way through. You'll be able to have those four different cabinets that you can get into. Nice black handles on them that look really nice as well. 
definitely like that they went with the black handles on the gray cabinetry. Now, as we're looking up here, we'll talk about the AC uh, system real quick because you do have a residential air filter in this AC system. So as you're out camping and you're in a dusty environment and stuff like that, it's going to filter out much more of the contaminants in the air like dead skin cells, uh, dust particles, all that different stuff. Whereas the little black foam pads that used to be the, <laughs> the RV air filters basically were only good for maybe pet hair. So that is a much higher grade filter to keep your air cleaner inside your RV. And then you have these blade vents here that push air out in a 360 degree motion. You can see this RV has ducting down both sides of the AC. So one duct coming out this way, one duct coming out this way. You can see that with these two vents up here. And both ACs are gonna be ducted together. And these blade vents here, these pushing air out in a 360 degree motion give you significantly more air coverage. They allow more air to flow out of them in general, so they're quieter because the bigger the openings there, the more quiet it's going to be. And that is going to help cool down your RVs up to 20% quicker because of the way that it pushes air out in a full 360 degree motion versus just a directional vent. So a very efficient system that you're getting there. Over here, you have a nice big TV. You have your fireplace down here. This will put out heat as well. So that will have a few different color options on it. I don't have this plugged into 110 power, so we can't get that on right now. But that'll have a few different color options on it. Nice hidden compartment back here with that tinted glass for your sound controls and if you wanted to hook up any additional devices there. And then, oh, didn't get that closed all the way. There we go. Cool. And then behind the TV, if I can get this out with one hand, you can see it does swivel, but you have a huge storage compartment back there. So a huge amount of space back there to store different things as well. And then up above here, you'll have a nice big deep storage compartment. Your speakers will be on both sides of your accessories or um, a, what is it called? Your electronics underneath here. So speakers on both sides of that. And then a nice finish here around the fireplace as well. You have your heat vents ducted through the flooring here. So this is going to give you the most efficient heating system where you're just getting a straight line duct that runs through the flooring. So there's no bends or anything in any of the ducting lines that heat has to flow through. So this is going to be your most efficient system by far. And then they went to these much smaller vents here, which help prevent debris from falling in there. Plus another hack that I've seen is people taking like a pantyhose type material and lining it through the inside of this and then screwing this back down. So you have another barrier there that catches any dust and debris or anything like that if you're very concerned about that. So that is another hack you could do as well. But this is going to be your most efficient system for heat delivery by far. In the kitchen, you're gonna have solid surface countertops. So a nice solid countertop there. Really pretty looking, the gray kind of cement color in there matches all the cabinetry in here very well. And then on this side of the kitchen, you have the Suburban stove and oven. So a nice big three burner stove there. And then the oven, definitely big enough to fit a pizza in there or a turkey or anything like that. And you'll have another storage compartment down underneath there. Next to the oven, you'll have these nice deep storage compartments on both sides. So that side will be the same as well. And then you'll have storage on both sides of the microwave as well as above the microwave and a residential size microwave here as well. And as we look at this, let's look at the price real quick. The MSRP on this model with the 400 watt solar system is going to be 113. So this is going to sell somewhere probably in the 90,000 range I'm imagining. Obviously the prices are always changing and it's so hard for me to keep up with. Literally every trailer that comes in, it could be the exact same model and it might have a different MSRP price on it. This is from the manufacturer, 113. So I am in a sales position. You can text me at the number on the screen there and I would love to get you purchasing information as well as our exact sales price down to the penny for you and financing options if that's what you're looking for. Or if you would like to take time to come and look at it in person as well, we can arrange that as well. So you can text me at the number on the screen there and I'd love to help you get all the information that you need to decide if this is the RV that you want. So if you are interested in this RV, text me at the number on the screen there. Now going to the island, you're going to have four drawers that pull out here. These straps inside here are to strap down your dinette chairs. And then you'll also have this here to keep your refrigerator door closed while you're in transit. I think 
I forgot to turn on the LED light underneath the island. You have an LED light underneath the island. I totally forgot to even turn on. So nice additional lighting there. You also have the same color LED light up above your light fixture in the kitchen as well. And the ceiling fan, which I should have just turned on because it's kind of warm in here. So you'll have those four drawers though. And then you'll have this spot that opens up underneath the sink where you have your um, trash can underneath there. And then you also have two sink covers that are the same solid material as the countertop. Outlets on both sides of the stove. So that's very important having outlets on both sides there. So you can plug plenty of things in. And then on the island, again, we talked about how this flips up right here. If I can get it to lock with one hand. Of course I can't. There we go. Okay. Got that to lock. So you have that flip up countertop space. And then you also have outlets on both sides of the island. So lots of outlets in this kitchen. Definitely impressed with that. And let's see, to get this to detach, I don't think I can do it with one hand. So I'm just going to have to come back to that. Right here, another little accessory area. See, I got my sunglasses there. I have an outlet up in the cabinet here for this area. So this could be like a coffee station area. Outlet up here as well. This kitchen has more outlets than the kitchen that I just bought in my new home. So pretty impressed by the amount of outlets. I literally kid you not, there's more outlets in this kitchen in this RV than there are in my home. So pretty impressed with that. Lots of storage up there. Two drawers that pull out there. And cabinet storage underneath there. Finally, you're gonna have your pantry. I guess I shouldn't say finally because we also gotta look at the fridge. Put your pantry in here. It's not the deepest pantry ever. It does have motion activated light when you reach your hand in there, but you have your mid bunk behind this wall there. So it is a bit shallower, but you still have a good amount of shelf space there, as you can see. And then finally open up the refrigerator. This just got in, so they haven't even put all the shelves in place and whatnot yet, but I did want to show you have water inside here. So you do have a water dispenser and then open this up in the freezer. You'll have your two tier system here with the ice maker as well. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about out here is your slide out underneath here. This is like a um, PVC plastic kind of feeling woven material. So very durable, very strong, but also very flexible. So nice carpeting that you have there. That's not going to get dirty like carpet wood. And you can just broom a lot of the debris off of there. Like you would a hard floor. And then you have a wrapped, subflooring underneath here and underneath this wrap part there you can see the indention there that is because there's a layer of astrofoil insulation in there as well so you have a wrap subflooring to keep it protected um, just every little bit of measure that they can take to keep your flooring protected underneath there they do there are a lot of brands out there where you lift up the carpeting here in the slide out and it is just exposed wood so nice to know that keystone does this and pretty much all of their slide out floors where they have it wrapped and insulated underneath there so I wanted to point that out. You also have Dynaspan one piece flooring here. So no seams in any of the sub flooring underneath here. It is a marine grade flooring. So it is completely water resistant and water if exposed to it would just beat up on that surface. And it is one piece underneath there. So there's no seams where you would feel as you're walking around. So it comes with a 25 year warranty and Keystone has never had a warranty claim on it. So a really great flooring that you got underneath there as well. AC controls, air vent, fan controls there as well. I should have showed that right up above your cooking space right there. Plus you have a fan there that will vent outside of the RV as well from the microwave. Now here we're getting into the mid bunk area. So as we go inside here, you'll have the entry into in from the hallway. You have this two cushion sofa with a nice big window in here in the slide out. So this can make out into a bed. And then you have a really nice organized space here with storage, a little desk space if you want a desk there. If you have kids that you're wanting to travel on the road full time with and need a spot to do schoolwork and whatnot, great space there for that. Plus this can also double as their bedroom. And then you open these up and really deep storage throughout all of your compartments here. Plenty of storage space for different school supplies or clothing or whatever it may be that you want to put in there. Lots of wall space for decor here. You have your um, USB ports there, a little table side space right here next to the sofa. And then these are AC returns. So those are gonna be returns for the AC. Of course, you do have vents in here for the AC as well. So you'll have the vent in the corner right there and then you have your heat vent as well. 
and you'll have two outlets in the desk space here with hookups for a TV if you wanted to hook up a satellite as well. And you have this pull-out drawer in the desk. So nice functional space there for a lot of applications for how people use RVs nowadays. And then coming out into the hallway, you're going to have all of your controls for the RV right here. Your 12 volt heat pads for the water tanks are there. Ceiling fan control is right here. Turning on and off your inverter here and then all of your tank levels, all your um, water heater controls, all your lights, your slides, your slide outs, your awnings, things like that. Additional storage in this space. Motion activated light as you're walking through the hallway there. And then you're gonna have your um, breakers and fuses underneath here. Central vac system, so you will have a central vac on this Montana high country, so it will come with a hose that reaches the entire interior length of this RV that can hook up right there for your central vac. You have a um, safety handle here as you're going up these steps. Ladder here that will pull out to get up to the loft. And you have this loft here for additional sleeping, so if you have smaller kids, this is a great space for them to sleep. Now I am about 6'1", 6'2", grown adult, 185 pounds. I absolutely could sleep in this space, but this is a smaller size loft. I do not have enough space here to crawl on all fours being my size, but if you have kids that are under the age of 10, wow, solar panel, something just happened with the solar, the clouds must have came out or something, <laughs> all the lights just flickered off. But if you have kids that are under the age of 10, they'll definitely fit up here and have no problem fitting up here. You can see you also have a window back there as well. So you have that nice, um, natural lighting coming into this area and then you have some storage space back there behind the beds and light switch and USB and outlet right here as well so good space for kids but do keep in mind it is on the smaller side it is definitely not the biggest loft out there and not going to be so well for like teenage kids and stuff like that it is anything more than just a place to lay down and sleep so keep going through the hallway that's going to bring us to the bathroom where you have a nice finished out bathroom here that looks really clean in a fiberglass one-piece shower with black fixtures here in the shower you have a seat in here as well spot to put your soaps and stuff in the fiberglass design of the shower and you have a skylight in here as well to extend the height clearance in there storage back behind here that goes very far back so you'll have all that storage there for different linens and whatnot. You have a porcelain toilet here, so a solid porcelain toilet. And then in this shower, if I stand in here, plenty of ceiling height. Being about 6'2", six, 6'3", six, with my shoes on, I still have about two to three inches to this spot here. And then you get about another three to four inches with the skylight here as well. So plenty of height clearance and the shower head comes up to about the height of my forehead with where it sits at naturally. Matching black fixtures here for your faucet, outlet there, um, light switch, which is not on right now. Storage going underneath here. Don't be concerned about seeing light there. That is just your pass-through storage that is underneath here. It's not the road. That is your pass-through storage, so that is so pressure doesn't build up in that area. And then you have your pull-out drawers here. Open up your medicine cabinet, you got all that storage there. And finally, you have your fan in here as well. As we come out, the door does not open into the hallway, the door opens into the bathroom, so you don't have to worry about that. And going into the bedroom, you have a king size bed. You're going to have your second AC here in the bedroom with that residential air filter. Comes with these pillows here. You have the nightstands that sit above the window, so they're up and out of the way for you. And then you're gonna have USB ports in the back corner there. And on this one, you have outlets on that side. So a couple different setups. You do have a little bit of bedside space here as well where this carpeting is. And you have, oh, you have outlets right here as well. Windows on both sides, blackout shades on all of your windows. You have all of this storage here with a spot for a TV, so you can either mount it to the wall or just set it on that tabletop space there. Pull these out, nice big deep um, drawers that open up here for storage. Open that up and then you have outlet there and outlet on the ceiling as well. All of your inverted outlets will be able to run off the solar, any ones with these yellow stickers here. And then underneath here you have a framed out 
storage compartment, your central vac hose underneath there as well. Nice storage, additional storage space that keeps things organized and clean. And then you have your wardrobe space all through here with the shelf on top and the clothing rod, plenty of space in there. And you have a spot for washer dryer hookups in here. If you wanted to install the washer dryer, these shelves can come out to fit that in here or you have just a huge amount of storage space in there. If you want to install a Wi-Fi router, that's where it will go right here. So this cap would be removed. All the wiring for the Wi-Fi router is right behind there and the Wi-Fi router would mount to the ceiling there. So you can get Wi-Fi inside this RV. You have your light switch there, your controls for the AC right here. And I believe that's just about everything in this bedroom. Um, one last thing I want to point out, because this is a nice little feature. You have this magnet right here that catches the door so it'll stay open for you and it will not hit your sidewall. So a nice feature they have there to keep that door in place. And that is just about everything inside this RV.